So let's look at the next one. And the next one is aperture, which I, I think has something to do with photos, right? I mean, a camera. So like a camera has aperture and it is not like how widely the lens is open or something along these lines. I mean, I, I don't know. But anyways, aperture here. Okay, it takes a number and then it takes a, a list of A's and it produces a list of list of A's. So let's, let's read the definition. So what it does is that it returns a new list composed of n tuples of consecutive elements. If n is greater than, oh sorry, this is a new sentence. <laughs> if n is greater than the length of the list, an empty list is returned. Okay, so, so we, n here is this number that we pass. So if we pass 100 and then we pass a list of one element, then instead of getting a list of lists of A's, we'll simply get a, a, an empty list back, which of course is in some sense a list of list of A's. But yeah, so that's why they're saying an empty list is returned. And then again, there's this transducer stuff, but this we'll talk about in some future video. Uh, returns a new list composed of n tuples. So actually, this is a pretty useful function. I remember I used to do a lot of Ruby back in the days, and then I can't remember what that's called, but maybe it's pair or something like this or something like that. So like each pair or something like that. Like you could grab overlapping pairs when iterating over a, over a list or, or non-overlapping pairs. And I think this is like overlapping pairs, right? So like, let's look at this. I mean, if we look at the middle one here, we say aperture with n3 over the list, one, two, three, four, five, that gives us a list of lists where we have one, two, three in the first list, two, three, four, and then three, four, five, right? So these are overlapping. So what we're doing is that we're saying, take three elements at a time, but progress by, by one element. But all the uh, sort of end lists or all the, all the resulting lists have to be of length three, which is why they're saying return an empty list, right? So, so notice how we're not looking at four or five, for example, or only four, and we're not looking at one and one and two. So we're saying, take all of the lists that have, or it's not all the combinations because it's like consecutive, consecutive lists of, of, of three elements. So essentially the result is these one, two, three, that's the first list. The second list is two, three, four, and the third list is a three, four, five. So hopefully you can see how that's pretty useful. Like you would first do aperture and then you would map over that. And, and I have a hard time figuring out a concrete scenario where it's actually useful, but, but I, I can surely say that I've used that in the past, uh, again, in, in, in Ruby. But let's, let's actually look at what this does. Or let's, let's actually try this out. So if we say r dot aperture, uh, let's just do two so I don't have to type. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Uh, yeah, that's it. We'll run that. And then we get one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, and five, six. Super cool, super cool. And of course, if we would do one, we just have sublists of a single element. And if we do three, we have one, two, three, two, three, four, three, four, five, and so forth, right? And if we go all the way up to six, we should get a single list, right? All right, so we, we just get a single list, one, two, three, four, five, six. And if we do seven, that's when they're saying we get an empty list. Pretty cool. And again, then of course you could map over this structure. Actually, I just realized in this uh, old thing that we had before, we didn't ever try whether you could, yeah, so we passed in the object here last, but I was a bit curious about whether we could pass the object like this. Uh, wait, so let me let me clean this up. We have pipe here, and in this pipe we pass prop data, and then as a second argument we pass, first we get the data, oh, okay, sorry, this is the example that I had that didn't work, of course. Wait, was it, was it here? I'm super confused. So that way, ah, let me just rewrite this. So we wanted to do app on uh, repeat. Ah, right, right, sorry. And we were saying uh, r dot pipe, uh, r dot props, uh, uh, data, uh, and then we do repeat. And then the next argument is that we do prop uh, reps to define the number of repetitions. And then we apply that to the object. Let me remove this stuff and let's run that. So that gives us a lot of undefined, so I messed this up. So app, let's go back to app here. So we're saying uh, it can be used as the S combinator when we first pass this function, this function, and then the value, right? This function, so let's just, let's not make it complicated first. Let's just say r dot repeat, right? Uh, yeah, then we repeat three times. So I was messing up the pipe. All right, all right because it's not called props, it's called uh, prop data and then repeat sorry so so then we get hello 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 sorry for going back to this example what I wanted to uh, look at was just whether it is possible to not pass object like this but rather pass it as a last argument here 
So let's just see if that works. Yeah, and that doesn't work, right? So you can see we get a function back. So probably uh, this argument is ignored and uh, we need to, again, apply the object here, right? It seems like that's ignored because it doesn't seem to be a difference between these two things. But either way, now, now at least that's sorted. Let's, let's get back to aperture. So, but also I, I think we've actually solved aperture. Uh, hopefully you can see, see how that works and that's essentially a way of, of picking out n tuples of, of consecutive elements from some list. Uh, so that's aperture. Next one is append. And uh, now we're back to the easy stuff, right? So append is super simple. So let's just remove all of this stuff uh, and append, we can just say, so our append, and then we just say append some kind of value uh, to some existing array. Uh, actually, let me do numbers. So uh, append 12 to one, two, three, four, five, right? Then we get one, two, three, four, five, and then 12. So, I mean, we add to the end. And actually, you can see here also, see also prepend. So if we just jump to prepend, you can see that it uh, returns, uh, oh, sorry, we didn't read the definition here. Let's go back. So, so, so append says, returns a new list containing the contents of the given list followed by the given element, followed by the given element. If we go to prepend, it will say, returns a new list with the given element at the front, followed by the contents of the list. So it's, it's in the other direction, right? So if we append and then let's do, uh, let's do the same thing, but instead of append, we'll say prepend. We'll run these two. You can see here we have 12 in the end, and here we have 12 in the beginning. So that's prepend. And uh, let's go back here to append. Oh, append, and let's look at the definition. So you can also see if I go back and forth here, you can see that they have the same type definition, right? It looks the same. And this is also why we could seamlessly switch between these. I mean, I just copied the code and then switched append for prepend. But append here, so it says, given some A and given some list of A's, we get a new list of A's, right? So essentially, it's this old list of A's with the new list, with the new A included in this list of A's. And that's that's essentially a, a append. And of course, again, we could partially apply this. So, so uh, we use it something like this. Uh, which means that we could use it in a pipeline or a compose. Next thing, apply. So apply takes, well, let's read the definition first. Applies function fn to the argument list args. This is useful for creating a fixed arity function. Remember, arity is the number of parameters that a function takes or arguments from a variadic function. And variadic is, is what we talked about before. Like uh, if you have a function that can take an undefined number of arguments, like you, uh, some functions you can just keep on passing arguments to. Actually, I mean, pipe is an excellent example of that. Like pipe here. Okay, so I'm not sure which portion we should learn. It's probably here, right? This probably tries to indicate that if you, you can pass an A and something of type A, something of type B, and then onwards and onwards and onwards. And, and you can just keep passing functions to the to pipe. Uh, but uh, presumably there are also functions in JavaScript, like native JavaScript that behave this way. And it's, it, it's, it's trivial to define it uh, yourself as well. But let's go back, what was it? Apply, right? Let's actually, before we move forward, let's just look at, at, at a function like that. So if I, if I remove this stuff, and if we would say spread, for example, so if we use the spread operator, we could say, if I'm past a bunch of arguments, I'll spread them. I don't even really know the terminology here, but if we do, if we do this, and then let's say console log spread one two three four five, you can see I get a list of one two three four five back, right? Notice uh, an array, but I didn't pass them as an array here, right? I passed one two three four five, so uh, I mean as as arguments. So I have five arguments. If I wrap them in the in a list, I get a list of lists back. So I get like, it, because now there's only a single argument, right? And, and here in our spread, in our definition of the function spread, we've uh, said, collect all of the different arguments that you get in order and, and smash them into this list, or not smash them into, spread them over this list, spread them into uh, the uh, a list data type. But yeah, so, so, so that's an example of, of something that, that's, uh, that's very attic. So what they're saying with apply is that it's, it's useful if you want to create a fixed arity fun function from a variadic function. So, so let's try this out. So their example, ah, actually, maybe it seems if I look at their example, it seems like math max is behaving in that way as well. So that would be better. I mean, let's, let's, let's try this out. So if we have math max, I mean, that's native JavaScript, one, two, three, four, five, and we'll console log that we get five, right? And if we do two, 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 three, uh, 
whatever, so that it's not the last argument. Yeah, we still get five, right? So math max, you can see, is very adequate. Like it takes any number of arguments, but maybe for some reason you want to make it, uh, give it a fixed arity. So actually, if we look at the type definition here, it says that if you have some function that takes an unlimited number of arguments and given an unlimited number of arguments produces an A, if you have that function and if you pass us that function, and if you then pass us <laughs> an array of some number of arguments, we will give you an A. Ah, so actually, this is the way we should think about it. If you have an array of arguments, but you have a function that takes uh, these arguments as arguments, right? Let, 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 let me be more specific. If we have this, we have an array of one, two, three, let's, let me copy this stuff. Uh, if we have this stuff in an array, if I just say max of data, what happens? I get not a number, right? Beca because that's not what the max data expects. Max data expects, actually, we could use this operator, I think. Yeah, so, so that works. Max, max data expects us to, or math max, sorry, not max data, I'm super confused. M math data, mm, math max expects us to provide a number of arguments and then it will respond with the, the highest number of all of those arguments. So if we are doing this in a compose or in a pipeline, maybe we can't uh, use the, the sort of spread operator. So then we could say, okay, let's, let's think about this. Uh, we do r.apply, apply, and we want to apply the function mathmax, and we want to apply it uh, to our data. Let me move these parentheses. Uh, does that work? That actually works, right? And if we make this 10, we should get 10 back. So that actually works. But yeah, so I mean, you, you can think of this scenario as that you have uh, an, an array of arguments that you want to pass as separate arguments to a particular function, right? Or in, in JavaScript terms, you want to spread them. And then you can use apply to, to apply these arguments to, to the function. Maybe it's the other way around. You should say we apply the function to these arguments. And actually, interestingly, you can see here also as, as a comment, C also unapply. So unapply clearly probably does the reverse, right? If you have an array, or, or sorry, if you have a function, so you have a function that when given an array of unlimited size of things of type star will produce an A. If, if you have that function, or if you, if you give us that function, then we'll, an apply will give you a new function that accepts a number of arguments, not, not given as an array, but given as, as arguments uh, that will produce uh, an A. So, so in some sense, maybe we could actually think about it this way. Maybe we could do, yeah, I was thinking maybe we could do our unapply and then apply, but then the problem is, of course, that we are back into, uh, yeah, so I mean, if, if we, <laughs> this is, fairly stupid but if we would do our unapply yeah maybe this won't work I'll just add another parenthesis and do our apply again this, that. yeah that actually worked <laughs> So I wasn't entirely sure that that was going to work but I mean since they are sort of the inverses of, the, of each other we can do if we apply if we if we wrap the function that we want to run with apply but then we wrap it in unapply but then we wrap it in apply again it, it still works right because these are sort of unapply and apply are sort of the inverses of each other but anyways i mean this is of course not how you're supposed to use it you're supposed to use apply when you have a, a list of arguments that you want to apply to a function or that you want to run through a function that accepts separate arguments and conversely if you have a scenario where you will be giving separate arguments as in like partial application for example but you have a function that accepts an array of arguments then you use unapply so super useful functions again especially for, for for composing and pipelines i'll stop saying especially for pipes and composing because i mean <laughs> all of these things are useful for that but let's jump back to apply so next one is apply spec this is pretty interesting pretty interesting so 